Bath salts. The words can evoke an image of rest and relaxation with skin soothing smells. But those same words can also mean something very different, and the effects of the designer drug called bath salts are far from relaxing. In early 2011, bath salts took the area around Bangor, Maine by surprise. It kind of snowballed, and it actually came on pretty quick. We had uh, three cases within a week, and within a month's period, the cases absolutely uh, tripled in the numbers that we were dealing with, and then it became an everyday occurrence. Law enforcement officers would respond to calls of people doing strange things. We saw initially bizarre behavior that was hard to understand, and we obviously knew a lot of the calls were uh, some type of drugs. At the time, uh, many of the calls that we received were not law enforcement calls per se. They were medical distress calls, people that appeared to be in danger. Uh, whether they were acting bizarre, uh, uh, maybe walking in the street naked. It took teamwork to figure out what Bangor was dealing with, and that presented a unique opportunity. We saw this for the first time. So we had an opportunity here to be on the front end, to be proactive to treat a drug, uh, and maybe mitigate some of the effects of it before it gets to a point where it's you know, so proliferated that you can't do anything about it. Nobody knows exactly why Bangor saw so much so fast. Was it because of the large number of opiate users in the area? The cheap price? The fact it was not detectable on drug tests? But we don't know why it started here. We can make some assumptions, we can uh, guess at it, but that's gonna be the best we can do. And frankly, it doesn't matter to me now why it's here. It is here and now it's becoming more widespread. That's what we need to deal with, that's what we need to focus our energies on. Bath salts were legal and easy to find on the streets or in stores. But legal didn't mean safe, and many people ended up in hospital emergency rooms, meaning doctors had to figure out how to treat them. And at first, we really didn't know what this was. These patients looked almost like psychiatric patients having their first psychotic break of paranoid schizophrenia. So we weren't sure what we were dealing with, but then we saw more and more of them. Standard emergency treatments for psychotic patients didn't seem to work. Suddenly we had to change our approach and we were giving more and more and more medication and then different classes of medications and realized that this was not something typical for us. Emergency departments were seeing six to eight cases a day, monopolizing ER resources. Because of the severity of each case, bath salt patients require care from several physicians, nurses, and other staff. We started to see more and more people coming in and they were saying they were using monkey dust or um, bath salts or white ivory, and we weren't sure what, that, what those were. Soon, doctors and law enforcement officers learned bath salts could cause extreme symptoms. When individuals use bath salts, or the, one of the components of bath salts, um, they can develop a variety of psychiatric symptoms. They include um, agitation. Uh, the, uh, we're talking about extreme agitation where they develop superhuman strength sometimes, and they would be so paranoid uh, and psychotic from the influence of the drug that they would end up, for example, um, carrying guns and knives to protect themselves, rip off kitchen sinks, and destroy property just so that they can pre um, be safe from whatever harm they perceive it to be. A person with these symptoms can put the public, medical staff, and law enforcement in danger. When we started hearing from the people on the street, this stuff is bad, this is then we realized as, as, as a supervisory staff, as an administration, that we needed to take a higher look at this and decide what is it first and what do we do with it? One of the first things to do was to train the law enforcement community. We've done uh, in-house, we've done roll call training several times for each crew um, and then outside agencies we've been doing a lot of that as well. So we get all of our officers trained up um, what they're looking for, we talk a lot about what's going on, um, we get the school department involved pretty quick, um, let them know what we're looking at. Um, local agencies, EMS, we get them on board, so we all mixed and got our notes together and started looking at this as a one group. Posters began circulating, public meetings started happening, and information began to emerge. We took a community response out of necessity. We saw ourselves as the community that, um, that had these drugs just fall out of the sky and land on us. It just it was luck of the draw, unluck of the draw, but when it happened, we felt that initially 
right from the start that we needed to make people aware of what this drug was and what the response was. And in order to protect the public, it was making sure that we didn't bury our heads in the sand and that we were very upfront with people. Most users are adults and many have used other drugs, but that doesn't mean people who work with Bangor area youth aren't keeping a close eye on bath salts. All other substances have started with an adult population and they have eventually trickled down to teens and, and, and so we needed to be prepared. We trained everyone, secretaries, custodians, maintenance people, hall monitors, educational technicians, school nurses, school guidance counselors, everyone, administrators, teachers, and um, they appreciated the training and being aware of what this is and how it's impacting our community. The training didn't stop with school faculty and staff. We also have held um, sessions in which we have informed um, students going from grade 6 to grade 12 in assembly formats whenever we had time available um, in our day. Recent changes to both federal and state laws have made it more difficult to buy bath salts, but not impossible. Most of this is coming in over the internet. Um, you can just go online and order it, come right to, your, right to your residence. Certain chemicals are now illegal, but dozens can be used to make bath salts. So as one becomes illegal, another one enters the mix. It's just a whole list of drugs that, that the Manufacturers are just waiting, put them on the shelf until they can't move what their, their, their MDPV or their methylone or mephedrone, they can't move that anymore, they'll just take something else off the shelf. The laws and penalties associated with them have made a difference in Bangor. So even though officers are receiving fewer calls about bath salts and the number of patients in emergency rooms has decreased, the threat from bath salts and other drugs is far from over. And having been around for a while, I have no doubt there'll be a new drug that comes in behind it. Um, and even if there isn't a new drug right off, the old ones are wreaking havoc on our community every day now, and we can't forget those, and we can't pat ourselves on the back and say, yeah, we've solved this. Because the issue is not bath salts. It's substance abuse, misuse in our community, and bath salts is just the vehicle that's calling attention to it right now.